Being a good communicator isn't always easy. However, it is way more challenging to be a good public speaker. The question is, how can you be a good public speaker? Who could give you advice on that? And who has the experience, a proven track record of decades of experience? And we have an expert here today. Hello and welcome, Philip Kanpani. Hello. Thank you very much for taking the time. And I'm getting straight into the topic. I saw you speaking a lot in, in, in London. I saw, I saw you I saw you in Dublin. I basically saw you pretty much everywhere where I traveled. I sooner or later saw you. So, so you are very present around the presentation and speaking circuit. What, in your opinion, and I know this is a very broad question, what, in your opinion, um, makes a good speaker? Because many people, when they get asked to present in their companies, what they say, they say, I open PowerPoint, I put slides together, and then I talk with these slides, and we all know that uh, that's not working too well. What, in your opinion, makes a good speaker? Three things. Have something to say, have conviction about that, and most importantly, have an understanding of how that has any value to your listeners. Mm -hmm. So when you say have something to say, that means because, you know, there is a certain trend now out there where, where people get told anyone can be a professional speaker. You just need a bit of knowledge and then you speak and you get paid for it. Do you think that's true? Um, not, not really, because you, you quickly you, you're quickly found out if you're just a fraud. Mm. And um, you have to have something to say that will be of interest and value to somebody else. It's as simple as that. Mm. Now, you don't have to have terrific technique because if you listen to speakers like Sir Ken Robinson, late Sir Ken Robinson, for example, he, he, he was uh, very conversational in his, in his style, but he had millions of views of mm. his, uh, his, his video clips. Mm. But the most important thing is, whatever you want to talk about, why should anyone else care? Mm. And if, you, if, if, if it has no value to somebody else, so what? And a good um, an example of that would be the, um, the elevator speech. If somebody asks you in a business context, what do you do? Most people start telling you, I am um, an engineer, I do this, mm. I do this and this, and nobody cares. Yeah. <laughs> because the question in their mind is, why are you telling me this? Why is mm. it of any value to me? So that's got to be your starting point. Mm. What, what do you want to talk about that is of value to somebody else? Mm. The Talk way in which you put it across, it follows. Mm. Talking about the elevator speech, which you just mentioned, many people, especially when they have expertise, will say, oh, I don't like that all these speaking slots get shorter and shorter. I'll just give you an example. Just this week, I spoke at a convention where they said they shortened the speaking slots from five years ago, where every speaker had 90 minutes to now 25 to 30 minutes. And many people say, oh, I have so much expertise to offer 30 minutes is just not enough. So do you think that it's possible to be spot on in a, in a rather short amount of time? Absolutely. Absolutely. How because to do it? You have to bear in mind also the attention span of your listeners. Mm. Now, a few years ago, I went to, um, to, to, to Brussels to coach the directors of a major bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, we went into the boardroom and they, they started, the first speaker came along and he started his, his presentation. He put up some slides and things. And I said, please stop, please stop. Who made these slides? And the, 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 the speaker's sidekick uh, said, well, I did. Mm -hmm. And I said, it's a very complex slide. How long is, is this, this presentation going to be? He said, 40 minutes. I said, to understand that slide, you have to be really expert in your subject. How long did it take you to become expert in this subject? He said, well, more than seven years. I said, and in 40 minutes, you expect your listeners to become as expert as you to understand this. Otherwise, what is the point of it? Am I making sense to you? Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. don't treat your presentation as, as, as a, a seminar, trying to teach people a, a training program. You have to say something, a single message that people can understand accept and use. Mm. 
So when people now say that they have a very, let's say, boring topic. So for example, someone says, I'm the CFO of a company. Once per year, I have to speak because of the legal obligation to our shareholders. And then they, of course, say, it is complex. I have to put Excel sheets out there. And the topic is totally boring. In your opinion, is it possible to make a, let's say, rather dry and numbers-driven topic still fascinating to listen to for an audience? Or would you say that certain topics are just as they are, not very interesting for many? No, you can make any topic interesting because what you have to tell people is not the facts. It is your oh. take on the facts. Ah, okay. Everyone is interested in you. Look, you have... Everybody has something unique about themselves. Mm -hmm. Everybody is a world champion at one thing, which is their point of view. Mm -hmm. So if I'm listening to you, Niels, on your subject, maybe other people can tell me something also on your subject. So you may, mm -hmm. may not be the only person in the world who is expert in your subject. But what you are expert in and what I want to hear from you is your take on your subject. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, of course, we have another issue. Some people have, let's say, um, not, not, not many self-doubt. So they think they are an expert, but they are not. And other people are experts, but they suffer from imposter syndrome. So they don't speak up. So when do people know I have the right level of knowledge to step up in front of a group and talk to them about what I've done in the last five or 10 years? I go back to what I just said a moment ago. Nobody wants to know what you've been doing. Mm -hmm. They want to know what is your take on the subject. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that you understand, know, and believe about your subject that could be of value and interest to somebody else? There's mm -hmm. your starting point. And if you have nothing to say that is of value to somebody else, nothing that is, that is distinct to you, then you're better off not saying anything at all. Mm. So, of course, when we now talk about delivering excellent speeches, I, I saw on your CV that you are a world silver medalist of Toastmasters International. So uh, being, being basically one of the best in the world in, in, in that area, of course, people want to go from delivering good presentation to excellent presentation. And now let's say what makes the top three people, let's say gold, silver, bronze, let's say they are all very close to together how does someone get to that level? Because often people say, oh, I don't have the talent. Other people are more extroverted. It's just not for me, maybe. Do you think that this is something which you learn or something which people either have or do not have? Uh, it's something you can learn. I, I think, uh, to oversimplify the answer, uh, great speakers are made, not born. Mm -hmm. it, it helps if you're, if you're born with the natural talent, but you don't have to be born in, with a natural talent. If you look at the people who won the public speaking contests in the, in, in, in the past several years, they're all good speakers, but they're not necessarily the most distinctive speakers. But they all, without exception, they have all got to the final and then done something memorable. Mm. Something that people say, oh, ooh, that, that, that lifted my interest. And I can remember that. And people go on quoting things. Uh, I Only two days ago, I was in, in another meeting and somebody m misquoted me a speech that he heard, he heard me give a few years ago. He, he misquoted, it didn't matter that he misquoted me. He remembered the essence of what I had done and said. Mm -hmm. And that is the thing that, 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 uh, that enables people to, to win the, uh, the World Championship of Public Speaking. But remember, mm. there are many layers. To, to win the World Championship of Public Speaking, you have to go through seven or eight uh, level, levels, giving a top speech seven or eight times to different audiences, and you'll be in front of a different set of judges until you get to the final. And when you get to the final, you are, by definition, already very good. But to be to be the top one, you have to do something distinctive that mm. marks you out from everybody else. Mm. Does that help? Absolutely, absolutely. When now to round this interview up, when now people are listening to you with all the experience and they say, "Okay, I need to be better at presenting, but I just don't know where to start. I'm sitting here. I have my 40, 50, 60 hour week already. Then I have to present either online or offline or it's a hybrid environment, it's either on site meeting people or I'm sitting in front of a Zoom meeting. I just don't know 
where to start. What are Philip Kahn-Pani's top three tips on how to become a better speaker? Well, as I said before, the first thing is to, is to examine what you know and identify what is, this, that, what is your take on what you know. Mm. And then ask yourself a very simple question. Why should anyone care? Mm. And then when you've identified that, then what you have to do is to practice, practice putting it across. And I became a top speaker by practicing repeatedly. Um, I, 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 back in the old days when you, you, I had to uh, film myself on, on a, on a, with a video cam, plug it into the back of my television set, play it back that way, and do this long, laborious process, and I did it over and over and over until I was slick. Mm. And because I was slick, people stopped paying attention to how I was speaking, and they listened to what I was saying. I think these are perfect final words for this podcast. We see that speaking is something you can learn. You don't have to be a born speaker. Of course, talent might help, but anyone who's listening to this podcast right now might be exactly at the point that Philip just mentioned where you sit there, think I should get started with it. And you see, you can learn it even, you can learn it to become a world leading speaker. At the end of this podcast, there's only one thing for me left to say. Philip, thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.